Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about the multiverse in an inverted island, and this is based on a paper that came out in June uh, with Kevin, who's a grad student here, and Yasunori. Uh, so let me begin by reminding you of the QES prescription. Uh, so this was given to us by Engelhardt and Wall in 2015. So the quantum extremal surface prescription tells us that the one Neyman entropy of the microscopic degrees of freedom associated with the region R, which I denote as S of ball face R, is given by extremizing over all possible choices of I, the generalized entropy of I union R. And if you get multiple uh, answers in extremization, then you take the minimum of all these uh, answers. Uh, here, the generalized entropy uh, consists of the area piece, which is the area of the boundary, divided by 4G Newton, plus the bulk entropy piece. If this I happens to be uh, non-empty and disconnected, we call it the island. This island was first uh, given to us in the context of black holes uh, by Pennington and uh, Almahiri, Engelhardt, Merrill, and Maxfield in 2019. And I want to argue uh, that islands exist in the following uh, cosmological setup. So what you have is you have a parent bubble, uh, which is a de Sitter bubble. And in this, uh, some other bubble, which is our bubble of interest, which I'll call the central bubble, gets nucleated. And it eventually collides with uh, some ADS bubbles. And if you consider a region R here inside the central bubble, then you have an island corresponding to this R, which uh, sort of starts in the ADS bubble and extends all the way out to infinity. And uh, uh, geographically, this doesn't look much like an island because the island sort of starts uh, in the ADS and goes all the way out. So R looks more like an island. So hence, uh, the inverted in the title. And we like to call this geometry the entanglement castle because this uh, R you can think of as a castle here. Yes. So we uh, only do the analysis for Minkowski or DS. Uh, we hope that it holds for ADS, but we don't really know. Yes, that's important because uh, I think uh, if there's no singularity, you'll anyways get an issue with your singularity theorem, and there will also be, like these will be pretty crucial. Well, but it could, for example, collide with, I mean, by, the theory has to allow for it to collide with, with other bubbles of the same type, right? Uh, yes, but finally, like, uh, it has to be an ADS bubble. Like, if it collides with a DS, that might eventually decay uh, to an uh, ADS bubble. So you can have a collision here, but the final collision has to be ADS collision. So you're claiming that, how, how, how would this final collision find ways? I mean, are you somehow extending the black hole and then saying, oh, well, we just have to end it on the singularity? Uh, yes, I think that's one way to see it. Uh, uh, so because, because the DS bubble would be unstable, it will eventually have to decay into ADS. So even if you had a collision here, which was with some DS bubble. Uh, yeah, that's what makes sense. And the potential R can also be very strong. We really don't care about that. Uh, it could be what? It could also decay. That's right. It could decay. But yeah, uh, we are just considering sort of R before the decay happens. So anything that happens around the sort of dashed line, we don't really care about. So this R doesn't have to be exponentially large? Uh, it will have to be large, I think. Uh, Exponentially, maybe not exponentially. I can talk about the size of R later. Sure. Yeah. It doesn't just matter how old it is. 
yeah, I think it's mostly mostly the size is important. I think, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah, so it's, it's all of this is happening inside this parent bubble, which might be in some other bubble. So this is sort of what the cosmology looks like. So yeah, uh, so you have this castle here, and uh, what's remaining is this water region here, which sort of looks like a moat. So I think uh, hopefully this looks enough like a castle now. Uh, So uh, why do I expect this island to exist? So I think the first sort of similar looking geometry was given to us uh, by Hartman, Jiang, and Shagulian, and they told us that the island exists in the context of this geometry. So you have uh, this uh, DS2 with conformal matter field, and you have a, a crunching patch here, and you have an expanding patch here, and you sort of identify uh, the two boundaries of this figure, then in this case, so this is the expanding patch, and in the expanding patch, you can consider a region R, and for this region R, you have an island uh, that lives here in the crunching patch. So this looks somewhat similar to that geometry, uh, but this is a, a 2D uh, JT gravity construction with uh, conformal matter fields, and we wanted to extend this construction into higher dimensions. So I will mostly be talking about four-dimensional setups here. And the other reason why we expect this to exist is it looks very much like an inside-out black hole. So uh, you sort of have this uh, region which looks like the bath surrounded by the singularity on, on, uh, on the outside. So uh, the biggest issue with sort of solving this problem is that even the geometry is not fully explicitly known. So initially, we were sort of struggling with somehow finding this quantum extremal surface. And what finally came to our rescue was uh, Raphael and Arvin's Island Finder. So let me quickly first tell you about that. So the Island Finder tells us that if uh, for a region R, you can find I and I prime such that the following conditions are satisfied. So uh, there are a lot of conditions. The first condition says that uh, both uh, you can find some I prime and I naught, which are space-like separated from R. The second condition tells us that uh, I prime belongs to uh, the domain of uh, dependence of I zero. The third condition is uh, I prime is quantum normal or anti-normal. Uh, when we consider variations of uh, the generalized entropy of I prime union R. The fourth condition is that inclusion of I prime should reduce the generalized entropy of R. Uh, so S gen I prime union R should be smaller than S gen of R. And the fifth condition is that I naught is a quantum normal again with respect to variations of uh, the generalized entropy of I naught union R. So if all of these conditions are satisfied, uh, then a non-empty island exists. Uh, and it also satisfies uh, some bounds on the generalized entropy. Uh, so quantum normal uh, means that, so for, for in that context, if I consider any 
uh, variations which are radially. Uh, so if, uh, if I consider uh, variations which are radially uh, outwards in the null directions, then under both of these variations, the area goes up, or the generalized entropy goes up. Increase. Yes. Uh, so in this picture, uh, so I think I needs to be contained in the domain of dependence of I not probably, but I don't think I prime could be sort of anywhere with respect to I. So I prime could be outside or inside of I. I think that's right, right? Something. Oh. Is it still? <laughs> okay. Uh, so let me briefly sketch out the proof of this island finder, because it's a it's a particularly sort of nice argument. So let's start from this region R over here, and let's think about uh, some. Uh, Cauchy slice sigma prime, which contains I prime. And you have the true maximum slice somewhere here, let's say. Uh, then what you can do is you can uh, start from here and drop down. Uh, so in your example, I zero is just a complement of R. Or so I'm going to locate I0 for you uh, when, I, when I talk about it. So it's going to be somewhere out, somewhere in this blue sort of region between. This is the maximum slice on the boundary of R, which, I mean, the proof involves doing, doing uh, sort of strictly maximum slice on the domain of dependence by not. Right. So implicitly, I think you are taking I0 to go all the way up to R. Uh, Since you do the maximum slice on the I think, yeah. In, in this argument, I might. But when I finally talk about my proof, I think I'm going to locate I0 specifically for you. So you can you can drop uh, the null geodesic from here uh, down to here, and you can find what uh, uh, they call the representative of I prime, which I'm going to denote by uh, I sigma I prime on sigma, and quantum focusing tells you that the generalized entropy of I prime union R has to be bigger than or equal to the generalized entropy of I prime sigma union R. And Maximin tells you that uh, whatever the true island is would be minimum on this Maximin surface. So the generalized entropy of I union R has to be even smaller. And uh, this guarantees that uh, you can find an island satisfying this sort of uh, condition. OK, so let me now uh, sketch out the argument for you. It's, it's basically going to closely follow number three, four, and five here. And I'm going to one by one show that I can find surfaces that satisfy those conditions. And uh, so one thing that we now gain an appreciation for is how easy it is to satisfy one of these conditions. But taken together, these conditions are very hard to satisfy. So it's, it's quite easy to find something that's just quantum normal or just quantum antinormal. And it's, it's easy to find something uh, whose generalized entropy is much smaller than the generalized entropy of R. We can just go up and down in sort of time and find something that has very small area and, and reduces S bulk. But satisfying these together is, is quite hard, which is why islands just don't exist anywhere. Uh, so let's start by uh, looking at the collision just between the central bubble and one of the ADS bubbles. And this kind of collision was first described by Freevogel, Horowitz, and Schenker in 2007. And we will sort of closely follow their construction. So this is what the picture looks like. So this is a Penrose diagram. And uh, if you start with a single uh, 
called Mendelucia bubble. It has a SO31 symmetry. Uh, when you look at collisions, that SO31 gets reduced to SO21. So every point on this diagram uh, sort of has suppressed the transverse directions, and they describe a hyperboloid, which is generated by that SO21 orbit. So every point here is a hyperboloid in the transverse directions. So if you just look at the setup and you look at the classical uh, wedges, this is what the wedges look like. So close to the singularity, uh, surfaces are uh, trapped, and in the central bubble, surfaces are anti-trapped, and sort of far away from the singularity, you have some transition, and surfaces become normal. But these surfaces that you're referring to are not the hyperbolic. That's correct. Uh, yes, I, I think by, by trap, I just mean if you do a local variation, the area goes up or down in these particular directions. Uh, so yeah, these are what the wedges look like. Uh, so uh, the first guess would be just to start with this, but this, uh, so this would be a quantum normal uh, surface, but the issue is that it doesn't, uh, cause the reduction in generalized entropy to satisfy condition four. So what you need is some source of bulk entropy which can change one of these and give us this uh, quantum antinormal uh, surface which also reduces the generalized entropy and inclusion. So in, in black holes that came from uh, the Hawking radiation, in this case we suspect that it comes from uh, the UNRU radiation get, that comes from getting reflected off of this domain wall. So let me sort of, uh, sketch what happens. So you have uh, this ADS bubble here, and you have a bunch of modes that sort of get reflected off of this domain wall. And the partners uh, for these modes sort of live here. So because this domain wall, it gets more and more uh, sort of null as you uh, go upwards, what happens is that uh, these blue modes get more and more tightly sort of squished together. We're just assuming that they, they get reflected and the reflection acts as like the extraction of the radiation. Uh, like the, the... I mean, I'm fine with just putting it in for the sake of this analysis, but I'm just trying to understand if it's supposed to be obvious that there's going to be something that gets reflected off of the domain. Yeah, it's just gravity. Graviton is enough. Graviton is enough. Okay. Yeah. Unless, of course, the pressure coefficient is 100% more transmission coefficient is 100%. We can get money in any way to double over. Uh, so I think like this is what the service as the horizon, right? So they're symmetrically located about this uh, sort of uh, apparent horizon. So you have these kinds. Yeah, it's, it's a null surface, which sort of is the asymptote for this domain wall. So I guess you do have vacuum modes here, right? And those vacuum modes do get reflected. 
and they do have the structure, and, and they would, in general, about any sort of surface, get sort of closer and closer together, and it's just that uh, this particular set of vacuum modes gets uh, extracted because of this process. So, I mean, you could, you could have a... Yeah, I don't want to make, uh, hold you up for two hours. Is this a picture or is this a calculation? I mean, is there, is there a sort of calculation analogous to, to what you're talking about in terms of finding uh, I don't think we did the trace kind of calculation, but what we did show is that if you uh, look at this, these uh, red modes and consider surfaces over here uh, and try to figure out uh, the entropy or the bulk entropy of that, it sort of matches one-to-one -one with uh, what you would get from these red modes. So like the coarse-grained entropy that you find in, in, on FRW slices seems to have the same structure that you get from these red modes. Uh, I mean, so they get extracted. So before this, you can just think of this as some sort of vacuum entanglement, and it gets extracted once the red partner gets uh, reflected off of the domain wall. So it's sort of always yeah, there. You think of it like vacuum entanglement if you have a ring double right. You need a bifurcation surface to make that analysis. What's the total radiation spare? This is precisely as you, if you describe from accelerating Right. Um, but, but I don't think that the kind of bubble is. But, but I do think you're, you're right. Like this would reach the uh, conformal boundary. If you just look at the single bubble, this does reach the conformal boundary within finite time. So yeah, if you, if you look at the original solutions uh, here, it, it does reach there in finite time. Yeah, so this is how we do the extraction, and because the partners are getting closely squeezed here, uh, there is a hope that that might be able to sort of change the uh, sign of one of these uh, uh, capital thetas or like the uh, quantum expansion. So uh, let me just sketch out one particular mode for you and show you how the sign changes. So you have a partner here, and you have the reflected mode here. And if you consider a surface that looks like this, so let me call this uh, sigma prime, and you have a boundary here, partial sigma prime. Uh, let's call this direction, which is the inward of uh, future directed null direction as k, and let's call this direction as L. Then in L, there's no squeezing. So uh, theta L has the same sign uh, as little theta L. But uh, if you look at what happens if I uh, deform in negative K, if I go from here to here, I capture the other mode, which reduces the bulk entropy. So that allows me to change the sign uh, for, of this classically uh, trapped surface to becoming a quantum antinormal surface because the sign changes. So uh, big theta k flip sign. And 
because of these uh, modes being sort of very tightly squeezed, uh, especially if I locate the surface closer and closer uh, to uh, this sort of tri point. So yeah, this is the quantum expansion. It's telling you how S gen changes as you sort of uh, deform in that particular direction. Could it sign compare with the smooth data? Yeah, okay. The smooth data is a classical expansion of just the area, and what he drew in yellow wedge is a classical thing. So flip is compared with the classical, but the form sign or the compare with the form sign. And the reason the quantum inversion has a different sign is because it squeezed the... Yes, that's right. So because you, if, if you sort of deform from here to here, you will capture the partner, which reduces the generalized entropy. So you already have the red mode with you, and you have also now captured the blue mode. So that uh, causes the S bulk to decrease. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, OK, so this is just what happens from a, a single sort of bubble to bubble collision point of view. And if this were the only two bubbles colliding, uh, then my surfaces would just be sort of hyperboloids that extend out to infinity. Uh, so this is what the two bubble collision picture looks like. So, so you have a central bubble, and maybe it's colliding with this uh, ADS bubble. And if these were the only two bubbles, my surface would sort of uh, extend out all the way to infinity, but that's not the case if you, if you think about the situation sort of at later and later times, you will find that there's collisions happening all across this boundary. Uh, and you, it sort of gets surrounded by uh, ADS bubbles. So in each of these bubbles, you can locate a truncation of that uh, sigma prime. So let's call this uh, little sigma prime one. Uh, similarly, you have some sigma prime two here, and so on and so forth. And this allows you to sort of form uh, something which start, st starts to look like I prime. Uh, they don't really need to go that much up and down in time, I think. But, but if you think about the, the space like infinity that's sort of here, it always gets cut by one of these bubbles, right? Like there's no space like infinity left anymore. Well, that's the order of limit that are important there, right? So it's true that any, such as any time like observer in such a model will always recreate mm -hmm. the vacuum with its singularity. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I, I think in that case you can go up and down in time, uh, because you do have the freedom, right? You're not looking for something that's uh, you're just looking for something that's quantum anti-normal. So if you a very complicated thing, right? Because it's, it's, that, that in itself will have a fractal structure. It will have infinitely many ups and downs, and you'll have to go infinitely far up. I mean, there's no upper bound of how far mm -hmm. you have to go, and so on. And then, but but you can always look at sort of three bubbles and ask if I can find something here which is always anti-normal. Yeah. And I, I think if you just look at three bubbles, then you can always find it and, and just sort of build it up piece by piece. Okay. Can you explain a little better this figure, like comparison to that figure? Right. So, uh, so before the, uh, these two bubbles collided, this partial sigma prime would have gone all the way out to infinity because it lives on a hyperboloid, right? So what I've identified there as partial sigma prime in the transverse direction describes a hyperboloid. Uh, but I need to now cut it because 
uh, this bubble will also collide on, on, on sort of its uh, sides with the adjacent uh, ADS bubbles. Mm -hmm. So that sort of causes a truncation of partial sigma prime to something smaller, which I call sort of sigma I prime. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Yeah, so uh, the last thing that I need to do is worry about these corners because I need to make sure that this is a quantum anti-normal everywhere, including at the corners. And that is easy to do here because the angles sort of are appropriate. Uh, so I can just smoothen things out on a small length scale and that sort of retains the quantum anti-normalcy of the entire surface. So I, I start by considering uh, the union of all of these sigma i's. And if I do some sort of smoothing, I do end up with a partial i prime, which is a quantum anti-normal everywhere. Uh, so I, I think that's what the hyperboloids look like when you sort of go to a spherically, uh, so like spherical I mean, coordinates. It's, it's, I was assuming that this, this, this I, I should think of that as being somewhat analogous to the quantum uh, Yeah, I, I think so. No, these are just hyperboloids on the on the yeah. point for the disk, right? Well, are, I mean, uh, I think on the point for the the hyperboloids with the same curvature radius as the as the so let's say the H three, then H two will look like a circle. Like all H twos look like a circle, or uh, the ones that have the same curvature radius as the as H three. So then that would be more classic itself, right? Yeah, no, these no, no, are. Uh, I, I don't know if the, these are uh, well, geodesic the hyperboloids. You know, the, you know, the the right, right, right. No, but I, I don't know if like these are geodesics also, uh, these hyperboloids. Right. And you're trying to connect to the two other bubbles that ran into it. Right. These two other bubbles, in, 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 in a more realistic picture that's hard to draw, would have, first of all, very unequal and extremely small sizes. Mm -hmm. But it, it can't run into like, are you saying it runs into here somewhere or? It, it can't run into this one because, uh, because. It can run and come back, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see any particular reason why you're drawing it that way. Uh, there are lots of surfaces that you could have drawn and I don't know why this. So I, I guess, so we also have some freedom to choose that, right? Like you can have a lot of surfaces, but I'm, I'm choosing one particular one which sort of, uh, which is close enough to this boundary so it, it is guaranteed to sort of run into. But it was important that it was that it was you, you first constructed it using this Penrose diagram to make sure that it's actually uh, right. marginally fast or correct. Or I guess in this case, um, I mean you have to show the externality in both directions. Right. So that that means you have no freedom at all of choosing. I mean it doesn't have to be extremal, right? It just has to be uh, anti-normal. So you do have freedom to choose it. Correct, exactly. So then, then all you have to do is to show that it actually, on, on that picture, that that corresponds to, the, to that line. Yes. So, you know, when, when you bend that line this way or that, I mean, that can have a huge effect on whether something is anti-normal, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so it, it's still, I, I mean, so it, it, see the connection between this construction and that drawing. So, uh, I mean, you agree that it's going to be parallel to whatever the domain wall looks like, right? It's, it's going to closely follow the domain wall. Because I'm choosing it somewhere in this corner, so this is going to closely tail the domain wall. Correct. Until 
that's right. Uh, and on the domain wall, you're finally going to see some collision because uh, uh, this is the central bubble has to sort of have colliding bubbles everywhere. Right. And, and so I have to be super close to the domain wall uh, to find, you know, mm -hmm. to hit them both. Right. But I don't want to be super close to the singularity because I still want to have some exceptional control. Right. So you, you can be somewhere. Uh, uh, again, so even the two bubble collision is solution is not properly known. So I, I don't think three bubble collisions can be sort of, you don't even know the metric properly for it to be like explicitly checked. Uh, but, but uh, if, if you don't, uh, if, if, if you're considering something close enough to here, I, I don't think you run into a singularity, right? Like it, it just needs to be close to the domain wall for the sign to flip. And as of now, it doesn't really need to be that close to the singularity. So each uh, central bubble is surrounded by ADS bubbles? Or? Yeah, it's surrounded by like uh, ADS bubbles on, on sort of all sides. Right, so because uh, any geodesic observer is supposed to hit, eventually hit uh, uh, an ADS bubble because the cent cent like the parent bubble is always unstable. Like if it's a desitter bubble, it's an unstable bubble. So it's going to finally uh, decay into an ADS bubble. Now, why did you say that this was a, an anti-bubble? Right, so uh, if you're looking at it from the outside perspective, uh, the angle is such that if, if you smooth it out, it's going to be anti-normal if I, if I consider sort of null deformations. But isn't the angle more like, I mean, there's also a time-like angle, right? If, if, I, if I take both of these uh, uh, pink lines and mm -hmm. to be respected by the symmetry that you want them to respect the individual bubbles, right. then from that viewpoint, these bubbles are extremely highly positive with respect to each other, right? So I, I, would, I would be worried that the lines are going to be this kind of thing. I mean, I, I think again, you do have the freedom, right, to wiggle a little bit up and down in time so that you can boost this. Now, wiggle some help. So, so smoothing that out doesn't help. You can't, you can't smooth out a, a flat uh, corner I mean, in, in, in some sense, I'm not smoothing out the corner. I'm changing my uh, surface on both sides, right? I, I do have that freedom to change that surface. Right. So, you know, if they have to be everywhere and they're normal within their own bubbles. Correct. Um, you know, then the other end has to meet the next bubble. Right. That's not a lot of freedom anymore. I mean, you, you fix everything by that point. Uh, I mean, so I've only used up the freedom to sort of make it anti normal, and the junction is sort of guaranteed, anyways, by staying close to the domain wall, right? But you could, you could move this upwards in time, right? Like going closer to here doesn't really create a problem. I think it, it might be better to sort of chat about this offline, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, believing that you can do the smoothing, you should be able to find uh, this partial I prime, which is everywhere uh, quantum anti-normal. So uh, let's now go to the next part of the argument. So hopefully I've sort of convinced you of this. Uh, let's try to show uh, that inclusion of I prime uh, reduces the generalized entropy.
so for that, you need some sort of entanglement uh, that sort of uh, goes across I and R. And in that case, you not only need to consider this domain wall, but you also need to consider radiation that comes out of the sort of bubble walls between the central and the parent bubble and the bubble wall between the ADS and the parent bubble. So in that case, uh, this is what the picture looks like. So you have uh, this bubble wall between the ADS and the parent, and you have uh, this wall between the ADS and the central bubble, and you also have uh, the, domain the domain wall separating these two, and if you choose R to be large enough in this bubble, and you choose I to be sort of large enough in this bubble, then you have uh, a reflected mode that sort of gets captured in R, and its partner would go into I, and similarly you would have a reflected mode that gets captured in I, and its partner goes all the way to R. So this is the way you can build up entanglement uh, between R and I. The only thing that needs to happen is that the collisions, all of them don't happen too early so that you have time to build enough entanglement to sort of offset the area of I. So uh, uh, you can sort of, if you choose R to be large enough, uh, you can always find uh, an I that reduces the generalized entropy and inclusion. So I'm, I'm using the free. I mean, if I randomly threw a dart at an information point of this ADS bubble, right. then I would expect that it either never hits the central bubble or it hits it pretty quickly. So that, you know, you have to dive, you have to accumulate quite a bit so that it plays for a long time before it runs into it, right? I think mean, you have to get a very, it's like, it's like shifting a, a, a light cone around that, that is due to infinity of computer space. And the two light cones are all helix. Uh -huh. And to make them sort of collide suitably, you know, after a long time, it's hard. Is that is that important, or in the end, you can somehow adapt something else and they collide right away? Uh, I, I don't get your question. Like, you mean which light cone? Uh, well, you were pointing out that in order to get a lot of entanglement, right? Uh, this ADS bubble has to be producing uh, on both sides. It's got to be producing this radiation for a long time before the two bubbles actually collide. Correct. I yes. think that's a very fine tuned thing. A typical bubble will not have that property. A typical bubble that collides into a central bubble will have been created quite recently. It's all along the bubble collision. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you can estimate what the generalized entropy of this R looks like, right? And that's basically given by uh, sort of uh, doing a volume integral of the coarse grained entropy density. And as long as the sort of whatever is left is small, you do have a, a substantial reduction in the generalized entropy by including, including I prime. I mean, but you need it like across on, on the other sides, you can still do it, right? Like if, even if one of them collides too early, because this is a global property, So, uh, I mean, so, okay, so uh, you can try to calculate the S bulk of this R, uh -huh. and that's just given by the volume integral of uh, the entropy density, the, by volume integrating the coarse grained entropy density, and if the, uh, what, I mean, it's the standard, like, coarse grained entropy density, right? Like, what you would get from, like, FRW calculation. Uh, these sort of closely mimic what you would have gotten from like a FRW, uh, like the calculation of the entropy on the FRW slice. So it, it exactly matches the entropy density of what you would expect from like. Uh, I 
So in, in some sense, the main thing here is that. Uh, the devices are truncated by the collision, right? Right. So, I see. So the amount of time until the collision is that's how big the size gets. Right. And that's, that's how much risk you can take advantage of. Correct. But, but, but the main thing here is that uh, S bulk of R, as long as it's, it's much, much bigger than what you get uh, from sort of I union R complement, uh, this is just enough to guarantee that uh, the sec this condition gets satisfied. Because this, this you can make fairly large uh, by, by choosing R to be large enough. Well, the R is really huge, right? So that's the, for the, for the amplitude overall the area of the surface. Uh, but the, these uh, eyes do have a very small area, right? Because they're close to singularity as well. So hopefully, uh, this condition is also satisfied. Let's talk about the quantum normal surfaces next. So uh, let me quickly go back to this figure and see what happens uh, as I sort of sweep across from, from here to here. So uh, let's look at the classical thetas first. So deep within, the, deep within the ADS bubble, you expect that any sort of partial sigma naught, again, that looks like the partial sigma prime that I drew earlier, is uh, classically, is classically uh, trapped and deep within the central bubble is going to be classically uh, anti-trapped. And somewhere as I go from here to there, uh, you have the domain wall. And somewhere a transition needs to happen between being classically uh, uh, trapped to anti-trapped, and the transition proceeds by becoming normal at some point. Uh, so there's basically three possible choices. It could have been uh, it could have happened simultaneously, but that sort of seems in incredibly fine-tuned. It could have been anti-normal, but that runs into issues with quantum focusing, so the only sort of possibility here is this, uh, generically, this transition is going to happen by becoming uh, normal at some point between the trapped and the anti-trapped. So now let's look at uh, the quantum expansions. So again, uh, deep within the ADS bubble, uh, the classical effects dominate, so you think uh, that this is quantum trapped, and deep within uh, the central bubble, again, classical effects dominate, so you expect this to be anti-trapped uh, at the quantum level, and uh, we already said that somewhere here, uh, this changes to being anti-normal, and in this anti-normal region, we've located our sigma i prime, Now, close enough to sort of this transition where it happens, again, there's no significant source of sort of uh, quantum uh, bulk entropy which can change this wedge. So somewhere here, sort of at the end of the transition, you're going to expect uh, the classical uh, wedge to match the quantum wedge. So you expect that somewhere here you can find uh, a quantum normal region from the perspective of I naught just because the classical wedge matches the quantum wedge. So, so I'm, I'm not telling you what's happening in between these right now. Oh, so there's, there's something, more. yeah, there, there's going to happen more here. But eventually it's going to match up after whatever happens in between. So uh, again, you can start thinking about uh, doing a similar sort of smoothing procedure, the issue then is going to be that the angles are sort of opposite to what you would naively need for uh, normalcy. However, if you sort of uh, move a little bit and you check what happens, uh, we were able to find that uh, the angular effects can always be suppressed with respect to uh, this effect of being uh, classically normal. So if you move a little bit, 
uh, and you do a smoothing, uh, it still retains its uh, normalcy even after smoothing. So uh, in a similar way to that, you can do the smoothing. Again, you have to think about the truncation and everything like that. But finally, you're able to find after smoothing that you have a classically, uh, uh, sorry, a quantum normal surface partial I naught which surrounds uh, which surrounds the region R and is between the region R and region R prime. Uh, so this gives us sort of the last ingredient that we need for this island finder to work because we've now finally located our uh, quantum norm normal surface as well. And this tells me that there must be an island somewhere uh, which is not empty and which on inclusion reduces the generalized entropy of R. So the immediate next question uh, someone will ask me is, can you tell me where the island is? And that's sort of one caveat with this process that it doesn't really tell us where the island is located, but based on what the wedges look like over here, it's highly likely that the island is somewhere here in this transition region. So, so to the top, uh, the, the wedges would look like this, and to the bottom, the wedges might look like this. And in, in between, you do have your quantum extremal surface. How much time do I have? No, too long. Ten minutes. Okay. So hopefully, if uh, everyone's convinced, I can tell you uh, about some sort of uh, con uh, things that this conclusion entails. So you can do a very similar construction to find like other islands. In, in similar setups, so for example, if you have two colliding bubbles, uh, which finally uh, end up colliding with their own sort of ADS bubbles, you can also find islands in this sort of situation by considering an R that goes across these two, and you would find an island I that uh, sort of starts here and goes out. And you can also find an island not just in the central bubble, but you can also do the same thing for the parent bubble and the grandparent bubble. Because it's not important what sort of happens in the future. So what that means uh, is that uh, because uh, the semi-classical physics sort of associated with the island is, is included in the, uh, can, is encoded in the degrees of freedom associated with R, uh, R along with uh, this sort of mod region, R union I prime complement is sufficient to sort of reconstruct everything in the multiverse. And in, in that sense, you can use it to solve the measure problem because now all of the physics is sort of living on this finite sized region of the multiverse, which is just given by R uh, union the mod uh, R union I com uh, R union I complement. So that's that's one uh, sort of uh, physical implication that this uh, entails. Uh, the next thing is uh, what are sort of some future directions that people have pursued. So I mean, the first thing people would want to do with this kind of a calculation is try to do some sort of explicit calculation that shows this again in as I told you, in sort of higher dimensions, this is very, very hard because you really need to know the entire geometry and even we don't even know how to sort of do that for three bubbles colliding with each other. But people have sort of made some uh, headway in uh, 2D situations. So uh, shortly after our paper, a uh, paper showed up by, uh, so, uh, Aguilar Guarez, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce this name. Uh, and others, and they try to sort of extend uh, basically uh, the similar type of construction, but they try to do it in uh, JT gravity. So what they were able to show is that uh, in, in sort of n copies of DS2, you can also find islands. So uh, the n equals two version would look something like this. So this is basically an extension of uh, the Hartman picture that I talked to you about earlier. So, 
So uh, again, in this expanding patch, they were able to find some sort of region R And complementary to this, uh, they could find an island I that sort of lives uh, on, on the outside. This is a Hartman picture that we started with and uh, approached the future of, right? The, the, the Hartman picture was, the singularity wasn't that of, of, a, of an ADS. Right. The AD universe, it was just a, a, a shot of the third black hole. Right. Which type is this? Uh, it's, it's just an extension of the Hartman papers. It's also a, Schwarzschild de Schitter, they try to comment on what would happen if you change this singularity by an ADS. Well, this makes sense. I mean, the, the problem with this, okay, you convinced me, you know, that, mm -hmm. that, that you can really make this construction. There's a million things you have to keep in your head. So right. You have to stay away from the singularity. You have to right. All these things are normal and, and they're normal. Right. And you know, you have incredibly difficult, I and mean, we don't know what these solutions look like. Correct. Okay. So uh, I, I think one thing that they suggested, and I'm, I'm not sure how much they could analyze this, was to sort of replace this crunching bubble by like an ADS bubble right. and, and try to analyze that case. And I, I think they said that they probably have an island there also. That they, have, they, they do find the island there. Uh, so this is, I think, as far as they could go. And they were also able to replace this one I think even uh, Hartman and company do that by like a Minkowski bubble, yeah. and, and they can find an island for this R as well. Do, do they have an explicit theory in GD that does that? That does that relation to ADS? Uh, this one? Yeah. I think they just like uh, glue the solutions together oh, okay. along the along the sort of uh, this boundary here. Uh -huh. And similarly, I think for the ADS, they glue the solution. Uh, along this boundary here. They yes. Yeah, I, I don't think they were able to do any collisions, but they were at least able to like replace these. Uh, right. Correct. Uh -huh. that, that's, that doesn't prove that it happens in the real world. Right. There's at least give a control to the starting point where you can really check that everything just checks out. Yeah, I think that's that's an interesting suggestion. Yeah, we can we can sort of pursue that. Uh, I think the main issue that we hit were like as lo as as soon as you start talking about uh, even like two bubbles colliding, the solution that I talked to you about uh, initially, uh, what happens is even in the Shankar Horowitz paper. The issue is that they have a Cauchy horizon and then the singularity moves in, so nobody really knows the metric, even like the full metric in that case. So even two bubbles colliding, you don't really have a full control over it. Well, you told me that all these things exist. You weren't claiming to have control somehow. So if you have control in this much more complicated setting, surely you would have control in the simpler setting where we arrange for all the bubbles to just be nicely arranged. Uh, yes, but, but I don't know how to do the computation, I guess is what I'm saying. Like, Right. Okay, I see. Right. Okay, I see. I see your point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. You can't probably find the quantum extremal surface, but I, I think you can go as far as like at least using the island finder to to find. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. Sorry. I, I, I thought you meant like you said finding the island. Yeah. Just ruling those things. Okay. I see. Yeah. That that could be done. I, I think. Yeah. 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 Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, so yeah, they were able to at least say that uh, in this case, even with like n being arbitrary, uh, the island location doesn't really change based on how you change n. So it, it sort of gives some more support. Like you can have these uh, huge islands corresponding to this region R, which sort of surround the region R uh, and sort of look more like the entanglement castle picture that I told you. So yeah, I'll end there. Thank you. Right. And then, uh, 
we'll also talk a little bit about uh, cheap disease. What about treatment? Is it simpler to do sort of transitions in treatment agents? Because I assume there's also some like, lack of local disease in treatment agents. Uh, do you know the I don't know very much about it, but I think you'll still have to consider like triple bubble collisions, which are not there in JT, but which might be there in, uh -huh. Uh -huh. In, even in 3D. Uh -huh. And uh, that might add again to more complication. But yeah, that might be like easier than doing a 4D calculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think another thing you could try is, yes. um, again, you know, you're, you're combining like one thing which is extremely hard, defining islands. Uh -huh. with <laughs> yes. And, and that's, that's not fair. I mean, nobody should have to do that. So, so you know, you, you get to be unrealistic. You don't have to immediately even make them obvious. Right. So, for example, you could, you could imagine um, initial conditions, mm -hmm. which basically just create a bubble on a tiny annulus. So it's not really a bubble, but we usually think about it right. as almost a point. But maybe, maybe we just make it come out of an annulus. So it, has this, it shares the same symmetry as the bubble at different horizons. Uh -huh. Right. Let's make it a round thing that collides. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, maybe that gives you enough control to just find a set, you know, just don't break the spherical symmetry. Maybe you find an island. I mean, that should be very similar to the, the, the CS2. Yeah, uh, I think, setup. yeah. And, you know, you still have to deal with the fact that there's a collision. But if you can push that away in uh -huh. that simplified setting and, and verify that everything works out, then I think that really the side of Right. Uh, but, but you could have a collision and at least make it fairly symmetric. I mean, that's fairly symmetric. So you don't have to tie all these things together. You don't have to worry about breaking up and down in time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. structure. Uh -huh. And it's like a mini, mini, mini step on what you're uh, doing here. But it's one where then, okay, then we can say, okay, at least we got, we got this. Right. Before. Yeah, let's introduce the next complication. Correct. Uh, Yeah. If they all those equations is now you 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 know who would be the three D that's you don't have to change anything. It's like that. Yeah, if if like yeah. yeah. corners, for example. You won't have to move up and down in time. You don't have to uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Those those to worry about. But yeah, yes. I, I agree. But but those things like this calibration, something you can you have done, like post grading entropy and then you know, the volume integral and so on, everything consists without those sub Yeah, I think like maybe what we have could easily be uplifted to the spherically symmetric case at least. I, I think we almost have all the ingredients in, in oh, place. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we sort of have the calculations also to back that up. Yeah. And because I know that 